Hi guys, welcome back to this model engineer's workshop. I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we're gonna be fettling up the axle boxes for the tender. So as you can see, one, two, three, four. They all need a bit of fettling. They're all a little bit tight at the moment. So as you can see, the horn cheeks are of a brazed silver soldered construction. Uh, there's a bit of angle in there, two little plates soldered on the top and the bottom. This bottom plate, these bottom plates with the holes hold on the uh, horn keeps, so it's a plate that goes across the bottom here, stops the axle box dropping out. These two, the slightly longer ones, end up with the spring uh, beam across the top, and there's a spring under here, and a bolt that goes down, a long bolt, and a spacer that goes into the top of the axle box there. As you can see, Axle boxes coming from the back, so they're captive because they're captive between the end of the axle, which is in the hole where my finger is there now, and they're free to ride up and down in the axle boxes. Now I've had a bit of a fun and games with this, and had to think about it because, as I say, as you can see over the back, this one, oh, man, that's pretty solid in there because I need to do a bit of fettling work, and I thought about it, and I thought, well, I can take mater more material off the inside faces here, a little bit off each. And then I thought about it and I thought, no, nah, hang on, wait a minute. This is a bit of five thou, five thousandth of an inch brass, brass shim. What I've done is I've slotted that in between. So between the axle box and the horn cheek, like that. As you can see now, that's quite tight in there. It's not gonna drop down. Got the first couple of bolts in, one at the bottom. One at the top, there we go, one there. So I've still got these two to get in. I'll put a, an F clamp, don't know what everybody else calls them. This kind of clamp, called it, I call it an F clamp. Da, 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 one F. Put it across there when it was all ready to tighten up. So got this one in first, spread this out, put it on, tightened it up all to hold it. Get the first couple of bolts in, took out. As you just saw, it wasn't there when you we started this video. Take out the shim, axle box in the right place. Slides up and down. Now, nice and free. You can just hear this, just literally five thousandths worth of clearance in there. That's the hair, about the thickness of a sheet of paper. I think a piece of A4 standard paper is about, uh, about four thou. Alrighty, so I'm just going to put you down, get the other two bolts in, put the shim back in, of course, just in case something moves. And uh, I'll be back in a minute. Righto, guys, so literally one minute later. One, two, three, four on that side. This one went on first. Come on, focus. Thank you. So four and four, eight bolts. They go through plain holes. I'll show you the other side, it'll be easier. They go through plain holes, drilled in the frames, tender frames, go on with nuts, uh, nylock nuts. Oh, there we go. And a washer. Now, I don't know about anybody else, maybe I'm just maybe a little bit anally retentive, I suppose. Washers nowadays are actually stamped out of the steel or whatever they're made of. So that means that one edge is, one side is flat and the other side is slightly rounded. I always put the slightly rounded side under the nut and the plain side against the material towards the bolt head. Just something I always do, something I always have done. So every one of these has the washer with the rounded side under the nut and the flat side on the other, uh, underneath uh, up against the, the frames. Uh, anything that's got a nut on, even under these angles, there are nuts and washers. No, 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 yep, no, there we go. Uh, here, you can see at the back here for where the coupling joins the loco to the tender at this end and the, to the train at that end. Anything that's got a nut and a washer has the rounded side of the washer out and the flat side in. Right, so now I've just, with you present, prove that theory. A little bit of 5 thou brass shim. God knows where I got it. Uh, must be long ago. I've got no actual memory of where I bought it. 
got a whole strip of it i know that much i've still got plenty left too five five brass so next job set this one up oh, man that's tight i'll need to drop off this horn cheek probably loosen that one get it all lined up to unfortunately level here on the bench so i can use the bench as a level horn block brass shim horn cheeks f clamp on the two get a couple of bolts in each side get them tightened up and just pop the axle box out to be sure to make sure it still works and then put everything back together just in case something moves and get the remaining four bolts in after that turn it around another one there and another one there right i'll bring you back when i've got all four done so three to go and uh, things are really starting to happen so i hope you're enjoying this because i know i am i'm really motoring with this now uh I know I've still got a job to go to five days a week, but uh, being a married man and having, owning a home, I get out here when I can, but there's normally something else to do. All right, guys, back in a few when I get the other three done. Right, guys, back again. So all the axle boxes are done now. This is the one I did before. I've just popped the bearing in it, so it's a nice place. To, I'll put the bearing back just to keep it tidy. As you can see, nice and free. This is the one that was sticking before <laughs> just dropped out for me look at that even easier uh, right there we go easy the other ones are all the same all got built-in five thou clearance on the between the axle box and the horn cheeks i'm just looking for my piece of brass there it is i thought i hit it hit the deck Nice and easy setup. I did use the brass, what is towards the front every time. Or was it the back? No, it was the back. It was the back every time, this one. So that, because I know that the front horn cheeks are all set correct distances. So put the shim in, put it at the back. Guess what? Nice and easy, no worries. They were a little tight, but by putting that in and taking it out, it gives me five thou clearance. I suppose I'm using brass. That's what came to mind because I knew I had it here in the workshop. You could cut a piece out of a Pepsi can, a Coke can, whatever. No sponsorship involved in there. Not sponsored, so don't go uh, thinking anything to that because it's not happening. So what happens now? Uh, take them back out again. Take the bearings out. They're only a slip fit. That's not a problem. And get things starting up ready for painting. Gonna have to mask off the buffer beams. The rest is going to be outside here. It's gonna be black, the inside and everything on the inside is gonna be the same as the buffer beam red. Get rid of this uh, grip blaster gray because the, all these parts, when I've got them to a certain point, four parts, the two side frames with this angle on and the two buffer beams, the front and the rear. They had all their angles on, no bolts of course. The rivets are real, real rivets, not bolts made to look like rivets. They are proper rivets and uh, they've been uh, rounded over so that they are locking everything tight. They got uh, sandblasted by the local sandblaster, grip blaster for me. Again, local guys, if you can support your local people, it's what keeps them in business. So that's quite, I'm quite happy with that. Nice, easy. Be nice to see this back on its wheels it was on its wheels many many moons ago in a trial run trial setup then it all got taken apart and uh, sent off to the uh, took it off to the grip blasters and a couple of days later they gave me a call tell me it was ready right so that's uh, the end of this video for today how to set up your axle boxes so they're nice and free using a little bit of shim stock in my case brass but a drinks can would be a probably even thinner so you maybe not, you might need to use two pieces i suppose i don't know what the thickness is on a drinks can maybe just one or two there but they, even that would work it would allow it to slip get a bit of oil in there and it will last forever that will keep your axle boxes lasting forever because they're not going to be rubbing or sticking give you a nice sprung ride Alrighty, guys that's it for today on this video and i'll see you again on the next time so this is the chef signing out and again, I'll see you in the next one. Please like, subscribe and share.